Now let's see some of the properties of conditional probability. So one is P of S given F equal to 1. So where F is an event and S is the sample space. So why is this true is just check this P of S given F is nothing but what can we write P of S intersection F divided by P of F. Now what about S intersection F? We know that F is a subset of S isn't it? Therefore P of S intersection F is going to be P of F. So why is this true? Because S is the sample space and then F is inside it. F is, a, F is an event, right? And now if you take it, if you take the intersection of these two, intersection is going to be the smaller one, which is F divided by P of F, right? So it need not always be S. I will tell you some events where we get a, you know, a probability of one. Uh, I'll, I'll just try to frame an example. Let me think about an example. Let us say we are having, uh, we are flipping two coins and what about the sample space? Sample space is going to be, both are going to be heads or first one is going to be head and second one is going to be tail, so on. These are the four events that we have in the sample space of flipping two coins. Now let us say E is an event that both coins happen to be heads and F is an event that one of them is head okay now let's say I want to find the probability of F happening given that E has happened just think about it we already know that both uh, both uh, uh, coins happen to be heads. Now I am asking you, what is the probability that one of them is heads? Already we know that both of them are heads. Now it is very certain that one of them is heads. Therefore, it is actually one, isn't it? Just think about it. E is an event that both of them are heads. F is an event that at least one of them is head. Right. What does it mean? What is the probability that at least one of them is going to be head given that both of them are heads? If both of them are heads, then what is there? At least, definitely one of them is at least heads, isn't it? Therefore, it is very certain. Or if you want to go with the formula also, you can go with it. See this. Now, this, this P of F intersection, uh, F intersection E divided by P of E, right? So what is P of F intersection E? If you take the intersection, intersection is E itself, right? Why? Because, see this, F is this and E is this. E is present inside F, right? Just like this. F is present inside S, just like that, isn't it? So now it is clear. So what is F intersection E? E, that is equal to P of E divided by P of E, right? Or you can even test it. It is 1 by 4 divided by 1 by 4, that is equal to 1. So that is how sometimes we get 1 in conditional probability. And the next one is P of E complement given F is equal to 1 minus P of E given F. So what does it mean? See this. Now let us say this is the sample space and an event F has already occurred okay and now there is a event E. Now what is that they are asking? They are asking that what is the probability of E not happening given that F has happened. Now given that F has happened see this is what has already happened. Now what is the probability of E not happening? So it is nothing but this part, isn't it? So we are worried about this part, right? So since we know that F has already happened, P of F is a new sample space which is equal to 1, isn't it? Since we know that F has already happened, P of F is in, F is a new sample space and so P of F equal to 1 right and now we can we can write p of f as sum of these two right so what is this part p of f you can write it as sum of these two one is p of this part is nothing but e complement given f plus p of what is this part this part is e 
given f right and now we can say that 1 equal to p of e complement given f plus p of e given f now we can we can get this one isn't it and what about the next one let us say f is an event which has already occurred which means let us say this is the sample space and f is an event which has already occurred right and we have two events a and b like this a and b like this now they are asking what is the p of a union b given f which means they are asking about this part 1 2 and 3 they are asking about this part so how can you write it it is nothing but p of a given f what is p of a given f this is a this is b okay what is p of a given f p of a given f is nothing but union of these two elements 1 and 2 right plus p of b given f p of given f is nothing but 2 and 3 now if you see this this 2 has been added two times that is why i have to subtract it which is nothing but p of a intersection b given f which means this part has to be subtracted that is why it is subtracted are you getting that okay so it can even be extended to more than two events also so uh, exactly the same way which we have applied for the normal probabilities we can apply the same formulas for the conditional probabilities only thing is with conditional probabilities the sample space will change from s to the event that has happened for example from s to f even you can extend it see in this case if you if you put s what happens it is nothing but a of uh, okay in any way see this uh, what i am trying to say is let us say p of a given s what can you say about it a is an event and s is a sample space assume that then it is nothing but p of a intersection s divided by p of s isn't it now what about p of a intersection s a is a subset of s which is nothing but p of a divided by what is p of s s is the sample space it is one that equal to p of a right so given that at least one of the event will occur from the sample space that we already know what is the probability of a probability of a is a itself isn't it now instead of s if they have given some other event then we have to divide with that we have to normalize with that why because the effective sample space has reduced originally the sample space was the entire series sample space was bigger and then the probability of a happening is the probability of a happening itself now when you reduce the sample space let us say the some other event has occurred now instead of the original sample space the sample space has fallen down to this that is why you are dividing this entire probability by the probability of this right we are, pro we are dividing this part by the probability of this right okay with examples you will learn this i don't know if you understood whatever i am trying to say here uh, just see that you understood these three formulas and other part is not required you just try to remember that if you didn't understand anything else okay but with problems i'll try to explain you all these concepts which i talked about see just now we started by the time we reach base theorem and then the uh, random variables everything will be clear if you are not able to get anything just keep going just keep taking the notes just keep going as and when we add more problems it will be clear okay fine Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177 and IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of one crore per year, your savings 
will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building. And then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting a, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join the of visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide, we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number 9494 Okay, thank you.